James was gone the exact two Sundays last year. And so I'm stuck preaching on the same text. And uh, you know, there's only so much I can think of to do with these texts. But I'd like to make a different point than I did last year from the gospel lesson this morning. In our gospel, we're overwhelmed with the goodness of God. It's one of the most memorable incidents in the gospels, at least to me. The, uh, Jesus is teaching right by the Sea of Galilee. If you've ever been there, you can picture the scene. Uh, the beautiful area around the Sea of Galilee, the flowers, and uh, just gorgeous. But he's teaching a great crowd of people along the shore, probably around just north of Magdala. The people are so anxious to hear the riveting message of this young healer and prophet that they are crowding about him. So much so that as he attempts to teach the people, I, could, I picture him being almost pushed into the, into the lake. And so he turns to, where he sees rather, two boats along the shore, and he asks the owner of one of the boats, Peter, if he could push out and preach from the boat so that he could have a better way to, 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 to teach the people more effectively. That simple request of Peter was to turn his life around. It became a life-changing experience for him. And the Lord granted the Lord, rather Peter granted Jesus' request, and as a result, his life was turned around. This gospel lesson shows us that God's goodness to us causes us to see our sin, and then leads us to repentance and to forgiveness. Notice after the huge catch was brought ashore, was, uh, as Oral Roberts used to say back in the old days at ORU, it was a net breaking, boat sinking load. <laughs> And that it was. And so they brought all these fish to land. And notice Peter's reaction. After getting this great, after this great economic gain, he falls at Jesus' feet and he says, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. Have you ever thought about that reaction? How many of us would act that way? It seems to me that some, I'd be more apt to say, Lord, thank you so much for all that you've done. But Peter saw something here which was very significant. Peter was able that morning to see something deeper than a great economic gain in all those fish. He saw God's goodness given to him so freely. He saw how God gives and gives and gives to us despite the fact that we, in our self-centeredness, in our sinfulness, very rarely give back in the same way to him or to our brothers and sisters around us. That morning, Peter was face to face with God himself. And in the blazing splendor of God's holiness, Peter saw his sinfulness. What more natural reaction to God's goodness and holiness than to fall down before the Lord Jesus then and to say, depart from me, Lord. I see how sinful I am. I'm a sinful man. When I read this gospel, I think of Isaiah who was a priest in this Jerusalem temple. On one of the days he was assigned to burn the incense at the altar of incense in the holy place before the Holy of Holies. He says this, chapter six of his prophecy. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up. The house was full of his glory. Around him stood seraphim. Each with, had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet, with two he flew. And one cried to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The lintel was lifted up by the voice of those who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me. Here's the reaction. Woe is me, because I am pierced to the heart. For being a man and having unclean lips, I dwell in the midst of a people with unclean lips. For I saw the King, the Lord of hosts, with my own eyes. Then one of the seraphim was sent to me. He had a live coal in his hand, which he took with tongs from the altar, the altar of incense there. He touched my mouth with that coal and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your lawlessness is taken away, and your sin is cleansed. And then Isaiah says, I also heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go to this people? Then I said, Behold, here am I, Lord. Send me. That's the same reaction that Peter had that day. To see the glory of God himself is to see our unworthiness. 
to stand in the presence of God's glory. And brethren, we are standing there today, right now, this very minute. We just don't see it because it's hidden from us. Once in a while, by God's grace, we'll pull back the curtain and let it give us a little glimpse of the glory that's going on at this altar. We must never forget where we're at. We are in the holy of holy, holy place, facing the holy of holies, just like Isaiah was. We are there, and we're seeing God's glory as Peter did that day. He saw the glory of God's goodness given to him over and over and over in that great catch of fish. And in so seeing, he saw how deeply sinful he was. Brothers and sisters, let us today do the same thing. Let us realize the glory before which we stand and then see in our own hearts that sinfulness. But know this, notice in Isaiah's vision, when he says, woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell among a people of unclean lips, which is the equivalent of St. Peter saying, I'm a sinful man, Lord, depart from me. What happened? Remember, one of the cherubim took tongs from the altar of incense before which Isaiah was standing. And he picked up one of the coals, just like in our censer, a live coal, and he put it to Isaiah's unclean lips. It says, Behold, this has touched your lips. It shall take away your sins and wash away your iniquities. That's God's love for us. That even though he's glorious in his, in his holiness, and even though we stand before him and see in the midst of that glory and that holiness our own sin, he comes to us with his very body and blood, which is what that coal represents, to say, This has touched your lips. It shall take away your sins and wash away your iniquities. After the priest partakes of the Eucharist in the Divine Liturgy, those are the very words that he says. Behold, after he takes three times with the chalice, behold, this has touched my lips. It shall take away my sins and wash away my iniquities. So brethren, as we come now to the Holy of Holies, let's realize where we're coming. When Deacon Christopher says, in the fear of God, in the fear of God, with faith and with love, with love, draw near. Let us realize what we are drawing near to, that we are drawing near to the glorious Lord of heaven and earth, the one Isaiah saw high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Let us realize where we're at, and realize our sin, then receive his body and his blood, and in that reception find his grace, so that we can go forth to this dark world and bring the light of his glory and of his grace and of his holiness to all those around us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Christ is in our midst.